The purpose of this recording is to provide an overview of the STAR tool. STAR is an acronym that stands for Student Teacher Assessment Rubric. This will be the evaluation tool that is used for uh, student teachers and interns from Emporia State University uh, while they're doing their field placement. The STAR tool is a new tool uh, to be implemented in the fall of 2017, and it replaces the previous student teaching observation tool. The STAR tool is aligned to a number of items. First, the Teachers College Conceptual Framework, and you will see that framework to the right on your screen. The framework consists of six proficiencies, and these are proficiencies that um, the candidate is expected to be competent at at the point of graduation and then of course continue their growth through their in-service career. These include uh, providing service to society, applying interdisciplinary scholarly knowledge, engaging in effective practice, responding to uncertainty and change, relying on self-reflection, and belonging to professional community. And as you look at the evaluation tool, you will see these themes um, pop up in several different areas throughout the evaluation criteria. The STAR tool is also aligned to the Kansas Professional Education Standards. These are aligned very closely to the national in-task standards. These standards really identify what a beginning teacher should know and be able to do at the point that they uh, enter the field. The STAR tool is also aligned to the KEEP, which is the Kansas Educator Evaluation Protocol. And this is the evaluation tool that is used for in-service teachers. And our thinking in aligning the STAR tool to the KEEP is that hopefully this makes it a much smoother transition for candidates as they go into the field. They'll be uh, familiar with the um, evaluation criteria. And I, I know that some districts don't use the KEEP. They use something like the McGrell Evaluation Tool. All of these tools have been aligned to the in-task standard. Standards. And so, and again, those are very closely aligned to professional education standards. So because of that alignment, um, all that criteria is very similar. And so this just makes that transition hopefully easier for candidates. The one thing that evaluators have to be aware of with the STAR tool is that it's not designed to be a single observation tool. It's not designed for that um, evaluator to just sit down in a single lesson and complete the evaluation tool. The STAR tool is really designed more as an evaluation tool to evaluate that candidate over time. So from the beginning of the field experience to the midpoint and then again um, at the end of that placement. So there are several things within that evaluation that an evaluator is going to need to take into consideration. So it's an evaluation over time. The observation tool that's in place for candidates during their field placement is the weekly lesson evaluation and this is what should be used once they start teaching is that weekly lesson evaluation. You see an example of the weekly lesson evaluation form um, on the right of the screen and again the components and indicators that are utilized in this lesson evaluation are consistent with those components and indicators that are used in the STAR tool. The difference here is this is uh, more of a checklist um, designed to really evaluate where candidates are uh, for a particular indicator. You'll see that the rating scale, highly effective, effective, developing, and ineffective are similar uh, to that of the STAR tool. It's just an abbreviated tool that can be done fairly quickly. Um, the other thing with the lesson evaluation tool is designed so that if the cooperating teacher, mentor teacher uh, decide that we're going to focus in on this particular construct, this particular component this week, they can do that without having to complete uh, the entire lesson evaluation. Once candidates begin teaching in the field, they are expected to be submitting this lesson evaluation uh, weekly so that their supervisors can keep up to date uh, with the candidate's progress in the field. The other thing that exists for student teachers on a weekly basis is the weekly conferencing form. And that's important that the mentor and cooperating teachers sit down and fill that out with the um, candidate each week 
And the reason for both the lesson evaluation and the conferencing tool is to keep that candidate and the supervisors uh, and everyone informed as to the progress of the student teacher. That midterm and final evaluation, that should not be the first time that candidates are finding out about concerns um, in their performance. Import, it's important that they know about these things early. They know where their strengths are. They know where areas for growth are. And they begin to figure out um, how they might improve those things. And if you find that a student teacher is really struggling in the field in particular areas, it's important that you contact Shannon Hall uh, and the candidate supervisors um, to discuss things that might need to be done for remediation or uh, assisting that candidate in ultimately being successful in student teaching. The STAR tool has four constructs, and these four constructs are the learner and learning, content knowledge, instructional practice, and professional responsibility. These four constructs are then broken down into 10 individual indicators, and these 10 indicators align directly with the Kansas Professional Education Standards. Each of these indicators then is broken down into individual components. There are 25 components that an evaluator will need to evaluate using the STAR tool. Each of those components or evaluation items um, are evaluated based on basically four criteria. And those criteria are ineffective, developing, effective, and highly effective. But it's really important that the person evaluating the candidate does not use just solely these four terms to evaluate the candidate. If you notice in the image on this slide, each one of the components has its own line in the rubric. And in that line spelled out specifically is how that rating item might look or the criteria for that candidate. So you'll see with this first one, um, a candidate who's demonstrating uh, developmentally appropriate instruction at the effective level would mean that the evidence indicates that the intern demonstrated an accurate understanding of the student's developmental levels, planning instruction that aligned with overall subsets of the student's developmental levels. And they captured the needs of groups and subsets of students, um, but basically they couldn't address the individualized needs of all students. This is considered um, an effective level. So it's important that that evaluator read these specific criteria within those individual ratings. This leads to more reliability um, in rating that particular candidate's skills and abilities. The expectation by the end of student teaching is that a candidate is in the area of effective for each indicator and component. Um, saying this, however, it might be that a candidate does not reach the effective rating in every area, and that's okay. A candidate, can, they may still be in developing in, in some areas, and the minimum proficiency to pass student teaching is that on the final evaluation, their average must be 35 out of 50. So again, they don't need effective in every area. So an evaluator doesn't need to feel like they have to give them effective um, in, in every area if they truly are developing. The other thing to note is it's the candidate's final evaluation that computes into the grade, not the midterm evaluation. So it's very important that an evaluator um, not feel pressured in any way to give a candidate all effective ratings at the midterm. It's important that an evaluator um, accurately assess that candidate in terms of their performance so that the candidate knows the areas where they're strong and they know the areas where they still need to grow, where some improvement needs to take place. Another note with the STAR tool is to, to realize that a candidate's grade is not positively or negatively impacted by the highly effective rating. Um, that rating does not affect their grade. That rating solely exists to acknowledge that there are those rare instances when a candidate has achieved performance in a particular component above that um, expected of a beginning first year teacher. It's where they um, just really show some outstanding uh, performance with a particular component. Because this is designed as an evaluation tool, the STAR tool, it's important that evaluators take more than just observation of teaching into consideration as they evaluate the candidate. Um, they're going to have those weekly conferencing notes to refer back to, those weekly lesson evaluations to refer to, um, there are also lesson and unit plans. 
uh, there are going to be candidate reflections, documents like the KPTP. So uh, the sources of evidence document is actually in the cooperating mentor teacher handbook so that uh, supervisors or those uh, mentor teachers, cooperating teachers can look back at that and get ideas for possible sources of evidence to evaluate each one of the indicators and components. Um, for supervisors, all of this information or many of these sources of evidence the candidates are uploading into Canvas, so supervisors do have access to this information and um, the expectation really is that hopefully they're able to look at that and keep up with that on a weekly basis so that they can uh, stay in uh, abreast of where their candidates are in terms of progression in the field. Some things to think about in completing the evaluation. Uh, one, prior to completing the STAR tool, we ask that evaluators read the instructions. When the link to the STAR tool is sent to evaluators, uh, there will be a link to the instructions. The evaluations will be completed during or through a Google Forms link at the midterm and final points during a placement. Uh, the Office of Field Placement and Licensure will be emailing out uh, these links to the evaluators. Again, it's important that sources of, value, of evidence are used to evaluate the candidates. And then the other thing is that if a candidate is rated lower than effective on an indicator, it's really helpful if some comments can be provided to that candidate so they know how they might improve on that particular indicator. Finally, before submitting the evaluation, it's important to save a file um, or a copy of that evaluation so that one can be provided to the candidate. Uh, this could be via hard copy, paper copy, or an electronic copy. And it's also helpful then so that the mentor, cooperating teacher, or supervisor has an electronic copy then of that evaluation. Uh, the student teachers ultimately are required to upload a copy of their evaluations um, to the Canvas website. Along with the STAR evaluation tool, um, evaluators are going to be asked to complete a disposition evaluation tool. This will be completed via a Google Forms link as, as well, and evaluators will get this link in the email along with the STAR tool evaluation. In addition to evaluating candidates' skills, knowledge, abilities within the field, um, it's really important that we also take a look at um, those disposition items that are crucially important for an individual to be a successful teacher. The disposition evaluation has 10 items and the goal is that the candidate will be evaluated at midterm and final and again this is something that will be able to track candidate progress and be able to identify if there are any areas of concern and areas where a candidate is particularly strong. Candidates will also uh, be asked um, to f complete this as a self-assessment. Um, to see how consistent their evaluation is with the evaluation of others in terms of their disposition. Candidates um, beyond uh, 2017 will be very familiar with this disposition form as it's going to be integrated uh, throughout the program and something that they'll be able to um, monitor their progress on uh, throughout their time in the teacher education program. Again, we would like to thank you for the, de the dedication uh, you give to our candidates uh, in the field placement. If there's anything that we can do, any concerns you may have uh, with candidates, please reach out to Shannon Hall in the Office of Field Placement and Licensure here at Emporia State University. Thank you.